Namaste. So last time, I talked about the experience of the end of the path, the full enlightenment. This time, I want to talk a little more about how I reached the end of the path, because it's a very instructive story. Uh, not that I want to boast or brag or... Um, I'm going to have to say some very unusual things. <laughs> but this all started out when I was very young, really young, like before I was even born. <laughs> According to Vedic uh, Jyoti Shastra, the uh, qualities of the child are determined at the moment of conception. If you're following the Vedic Garbhadhana ceremony, where you have sex only to procreate children, you will know the moment of conception. And you can raise a chart for it, and then the qualities of the child to be born, including their sexual alignment and so on, are clearly uh, visible. And it's also there in the birth chart. But you can know even before the birth, that's what I'm saying, by astrology. So my mother was one of the first early tantricas in the West. She was a hippie before there were hippies. And she met this man in New York, uh, a foreigner, and apparently well off, drove a nice fancy car. And basically they ran away together. <laughs> he taught her Tantra a specific type of tantric practice called carezza. It's an Italian word. It means caress. And this is a very loving form of tantric uh, sexual practice. And I was born as a result of this practice. And in my chart, if you know how to analyze this, which very few people do, because of the mistranslation of the original works into Western languages, uh, one can see very clearly in my birth chart that I am not an ordinary person. Uh, most people can unambiguously say, I am a man, I am a woman, or I am heterosexual, or I am homosexual, like that. I don't fall into any of those categories. I am all. I am everything. Especially now that I know the truth. And so uh, if we had had the benefit of the insight of Vedic astrology in those days, maybe my parents would have raised me, you know, in a better way. They did the best they could. But my mother from very early days uh, tried to transfer her attitudes and her tantric uh, practices to me. Not that I had sex with my mother, but she explained things to me. You know, like the famous uh, facts of life conversation that the parent is supposed to have with the child. 
<laughs> well, ours was a little different. <laughs> so anyway, you can see in my chart, it's very clear, that I am neither male nor female, neither, neither heterosexual nor homosexual, but somehow both. And also I'm kinky. <laughs> so I started practicing these tantric things um, very early, like 12, 13 years old. And I always had my mother's counsel and guidance and I confided in her and she showed me the way. So I simply continued to practice for many years until in 1984, I got a visit from Goddess. And I've described this many times. I was in Portland, Oregon, had just done uh, about six months at Rancho Rajneesh. And I was doing a meditation intensive, solo meditation, just all alone in my apartment. And she appeared to me, um, not in a physical form, not even in a visible form, but in an energetic form. And tapped me on the forehead, gave me Shakti pot directly from Shakti herself. And that was it. I, I was enlightened. My enlightenment experience, I've described it several times on this channel. Very similar to Osho Rajneesh's enlightenment experience. So the problem was none of this happened according to any of the orthodox teachings. This was all very deep, very spontaneous, very tantric. And after many years of research and study, I finally understood and, and Goddess revealed to me when I prayed to her to ask her for this, that she gave me enlightenment because she accepted the tantric practices I did as a boy and young man as worship of her. You know, I, I used to often say, I'm in love with love. And I approach sexuality that way. It's love. Now, a lot of people don't. And I've had a lot of experience with partners who didn't approach sexuality with love. And it wasn't satisfying at all. So it doesn't matter how radical your sexual practices are, as long as they're done with love, from love, in love, with love. So anyway, after many years of research and study and further practices, I was able to understand all of this clearly. So, Enlightenment comes not from our doing. Try to understand. It's a blessing, a gift, a gift from God or Goddess that uh, they feel you have now transcended. And then the consciousness changes. The veil is removed. You see the truth. You see what really is. And it's devastating. <laughs> it's shocking. Because most people, including myself, previous to enlightenment, lived in a completely fabricated world of name and form. Words, ideas, concepts. And these are our prisons that bind us to material existence. 
And liberation or enlightenment means transcending them. You can't do it on your own. It's just like if someone is in jail, in prison, they can't get out. Somebody has to let them out or get them out. Someone with more freedom, more facility, more resources. So in the same way, in samsara, we are trapped, just like in prison. And only the mercy of God or goddess can set us free. Every time I have the honor of being able to teach or coach someone uh, in the practices of goddess worship, I get such a tremendous rush of bliss coming from my heart because she is pleased. And in the same way, anyone who does any service no matter how great or small, will get reciprocation from her. It happened with both the great Devi mantras that I practiced, Gayatri and Mahashodashi, both of which have a series on this channel that after chanting them basically day and night for some time, few weeks or few months, I had an experience like suddenly just sitting in the morning and chanting early in the morning. Suddenly, the energy started moving. You know, like in an orgasm, you feel the energy moving first in your legs and then in your belly and like that. If you don't, by the way, you need some help. <laughs> anyway, that energy, that orgasmic energy went all over my body, all through my body, all through my consciousness. So this is the kind of reciprocation that she gives to tell you you're on the right track. She doesn't show up in a physical form or of even a visible form. She doesn't show up or advise you in words. Although you may use uh, something like tarot cards or I Ching or astrology to try to understand her ways. Still, in the end, she fills in the gaps in that knowledge with her direct personal relationship. She becomes your friend. She starts to show up in your dreams and teach you. So I, I didn't reach enlightenment through any of the orthodox methods, through any of the classic scriptures or, you know, any of the, the normal ways. Uh, I had taken the radical tantric path from very early life and it gave very quick results. So this is how I reached the end of the path. Actually, I didn't do anything. <laughs> from my point of view now, I can see we're all just puppets, almost like robots. <laughs> we have tiny amount of free will. And the best use of this free will is to take the karma that we are due in this life and use it to worship the goddess. And Whatever it is, whether we materially judge it good or bad, right or wrong, whatever, if we offer it to her with sincerity and love, 
she will reciprocate and bring us to the highest enlightenment. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti, Aum.